Cheers to all. Welcome, this is my channel. It's nothing special, as I always say. I don't have an intro. If you haven't noticed, I just sit in front of the camera and pretend there's multiple people around me. As I did since I was seven and I was teaching lectures in order to learn them to the room of imaginary people. I knew that there were no people out there. It's just I was always a teacher without the audience. Yeah, but here we are. <laughs> My life has turned out so well. So well. Whew. This is the beginning of a new series that's called Simplify. And you guessed it, I simplify a lot of things in it. So today, what I'm going to simplify is Salem Witch Trials. I cover it on my podcast, the link is below, you know what to do, internet. But this is sort of like rapid-fire simplification of Salem Witch Trials, you know? It's kind of like, pink simplify series as, um, you know, the blank for dummies kind of book. And uh, feel free to leave comments on what you want simplified, because let's be honest, we learn more from YouTube and podcasts than we ever learned in school. Well, at least I did, I don't know about you, but hey, here we are. Whew. Yeah. So why are they called Salem Witch Trials? Because they originate in Salem in Massachusetts in the US. When did they take place? Sort of like 1692 and 1693, but they were only abolished in 1702 completely, like any trials towards witches and witchcraft. How did it originate? Well, it originated actually in this family where the cousins lived. So Betty Paris was nine and Abigail Williams was 11 at the time. So these two lived under like a really strict rule. Um, the parents were like from the Catholic family, so this was really out of the ordinary. So they were kind of having fits, they had like spasms, like started behaving really manically. Constantly like scratching themselves, they kind of complained of their skin prickling. And sure as hell, this kind of spread. So suddenly it was like 12 girls, but then it spread to men as well. So of course, their parents brought them to the physician, to the GP. And the GP said that they are under an evil spell. You know, your classic GP diagnosis. So as that diagnosis doesn't have a cure, they, um, after some time, like their parents pressured and pressured them. Of course, I know this because there's so many sources from 1690s. Um, so I imagine the parents like, pressure them, and these kids finally cave and accuse three people of possessing them. It's three women. Sarah Hood, Sarah Williams, and Tituba. Tituba actually worked for the Betty Paris as like an enslaved woman. You know, this was still 1690s. Not that slavery doesn't happen today. It fucking does. And Tituba was kind of, well, the smartest out of all three because she immediately realized if she doesn't confess, even though she's not a witch and she's not like possessing anybody, and practicing witchcraft, that she will not get out of prison, she will not like get to freedom. So she confesses because at that point, like the justice system valued confessions over like actually believing into what's happening. Because of this noble effect and they have to kind of have somebody, they have to have a culprit. And the Tuba not only confesses though, she says that the other two have forced her. So the other two are imprisoned and what evidence do they use, you might ask? Well, they use testimonies from the children. So they use children's testimonies in court. Also, they figure out this, <laughs> it's again pre-DNA era, okay? They figure out that if they use something to sort of pinpoint uh, all these people have been bewitched, that then they're not going to be able to deny it. So what they use, they make these witch cakes, which are gross, okay? If you're squeamish, they're going to be grossed out. So they are made from rye and the urine of the person that they believe is possessed. They give it to the dog to, like, taste it. And if the dog has the same symptoms, which, of course, like, it's the dog is drinking urine, the dog is going to, like, vomit and show some symptoms, that's the undeniable proof that that person has been possessed and they must be in prison. Legit evidence. So they would go visit people's homes, like the homes of the accused, and then they are looking for anything that stands out. If it's a weird book, if it's like different ornaments, if it's horoscopes, God forbid it's horoscopes, if it's different like herbs and ointments, trivial stuff that today you would not think anything about because anybody can just read, you know, freedom of reading or whatever. 
Yeah, at that point it was taken seriously. And by the end of all of this, 14 women and 6 men ended up being executed by hanging. So, and this all happened until, well guess what, this snowball effect kind of escalated. It went all the way to the government, so the government's wife was accused of witchcraft, and guess what, of course, the guy actually defended the wife, so he just decided to abolish all the further trials because that's how justice departments work. Now, what could have actually been the cause of the symptoms, or like how these children and women and everybody was reacting? It could be explained in two, well, two plausible and one mm, shaky explanation. One of the most common explanations is ergot. What is ergot? It actually grows on rye. So obviously, you know, pre Google era, if they didn't research it, they didn't know of it, ergot was actually quite poisonous. So if you were to make a rye bread, use rye, I don't know, oats or whatever, if it had ergot on it, those symptoms could be explained because ergot caused hallucinations, it caused like muscle spasms, it was nature's LSD. The second plausible explanation would be cold. <laughs> I know. Uh, basically, Basically, that area apparently had like a six-year cold spell, and in particular, that winter between 1991 was particularly cold. Now you're thinking, why the fuck cold? Well, witch hunts are actually generally more common during the cold era because, well, people are looking for like scapegoats to blame on the lack of crops, you know, like the unfavorable conditions for any food to be grown. Like the crops, the food is needed throughout the whole year, especially in like the poor areas. And obviously, if it is just freezing cold throughout the whole year, you can't grow those crops. And then everybody's just looking for somebody to blame. And the less plausible explanation is mass hysteria. Not just like, oh, mass hysteria, you know, like it's a common term used today. More as a psychological condition because the adults were in on it as well. So it's not just like, oh, kids were spreading this. It is the adults that believe it as well. It started at like minister's house at a really Catholic, strict Catholic background, which caused obviously a lot of pressure because if you can't explain something and the fear is there, well then kind of it's easier to blame it on something supernatural or on like somebody else. And then everybody joins into this mass hysteria and the fear just does its thing. What's the moral of this story? You tell me. Don't spread unfounded gossip. That's a good one. Good one, yeah. Keep it coming, keep it coming. I'm teaching an imaginary fucking room. Let's do this. Don't trust children. Good one, good one. Good one, yeah. You, you come. <laughs> Maybe have some hard evidence. Yes, you see, you guys figured it out. Watch out for the next episode of Simplify. Well, now, if I knew how to edit nicely, I would put like, like, leave a like if you like this so that I continue. Subscribe, click the button subscribe because um, then you kind of it pops into your feed. And then click that little bell because then you actually get notified the second I post that shit up, okay? Get your graduation hats on because she is about to get simpler than ever. This is not, I, I don't do outros, I don't have intros, I don't have outros, I don't have anything else to tell you, okay? So, um, uh, I can't even do the leg kick today. I just suck at you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's just imagine I did the leg kick, let's just imagine I edited it all right, and, uh,